know that his brashness was a front to cover the real tenderness of a man that he was afraid to show because people take advantage of you when it appears that you're meek or tender. That was a feminine side of Colin that he hated. But it was a beautiful side of him to give balance to the warrior spirit. Somebody delivered a tape to my son nearly a year ago on one of Brother College's speeches. And during the year, I would ask my son, uh, did, you, did you get a chance to listen? He said, Dad, I can't find the tape. Tuesday, this coming Tuesday will be three weeks ago, I had the laborers out at the farm to discuss Savior's Day. And I called my son back and I asked him, have you heard anything about Brother Khaled? Little did I know that at that very time that I was asking about him, he was suffering that aneurysm in Atlanta, Georgia. My son went home and found the tape that night and he played it. And Brother Khaled had gone all the way out. Been shot down in cold blood. Nine millimeter bullets in my body. Five people shot down all around me. And my little nine-year-old at that time, little Farrakhan Khaled Muhammad, no man names his son after another man unless he loves that man, honors that man, reveres that man, and looks up to that man as his hero. My little son Farrakhan Khaled Muhammad, almost struck by a nine-millimeter bullet, found three other nine-millimeters in a sack, found a 30 yard 6 rifle with a scope, waiting to take my life. I have waded through the blood of an assassination attempt. I have sat in the hole and in the dungeons of the white man's prison. I have stood up against the most awesome crackers of the world. The White House against me. The Senate against me. The Congress against me. The governor, the mayor, the police, the army, the navy, the air force, the FBI, the CIA. God damn it, I don't fear nothing but God himself. Only God and God alone. Only God and God alone. I wish we had our brother here tonight. Who's the brother that does the poem? What's his name? Brother Heru. Oh, I wish we had Brother Heru here tonight. But I'm telling you, my dear father, the scripture that you taught me from the teachings of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad said in Exodus 21 and 16, he that stealeth a man and selleth that man, and if he be caught with that man in his hands, he shall surely be put to death. The white man admits he stole us. He admits he sold us from city to city, from plantation to plantation, from auction block to auction block. And now, in the presence of Almighty God, within the borders of the hells of North America, we are still in the white man's hands. He that stealeth a man and selleth that man, and if he be caught with that man in his hands, he shall surely be put to death. Another scripture says, as you have delighted in taking our blood, you will be given your own blood to drink like water. Oh, there is no repentance for America. There is no atonement for America. Read the book of Nahum, two books after Jonah. Now, I'm, if you would have said you were Nahum, I could hum with you on that. But not Jonah. You're not going to save this beast. Supreme wisdom, the lessons given to the young lost found Elijah Muhammad by his teacher, Master Farad Muhammad. It says that this is a first term examination for Mr. Elijah Muhammad, one of the lost founds. 
And these questions are answered very near correct in the supreme lesson, supreme wisdom lessons of the lost found nation of Islam. We are told that you cannot reform the devil. The question is asked, and can you reform devil? Which automatically intimates the repentance and the atonement of the devil. And the answer said that all of the emphatically no. What did it say? No. It said emphatically no. What did it say? Emphatically no. It says emphatically no. Oh dear father, have you forgotten the lesson? The lessons say emphatically no. It says all of the prophets have tried and none of them were successful. Who do you think you are? That God has come to destroy this goddamn bastard and you will get in the way to try to save this bastard? Hell no. Hell no. You get in the way of God's wrath. And it hurt me to hear some of the things that it is reported that he was saying. He did not understand my moves and therefore rather than question, he became a critic. And I guess he wanted me to come after him and bring him home. But since I did not send him out, I was not going after him. I was waiting for God to help him to see the error of his way. And if he started to make a step toward me, I would make two toward him. Why am I saying this? During the time of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, there were always examples that we could point to as guidance for us. In the early days, it was the messenger's brother, um, Kalat. It was his assistant minister, Augustus Muhammad, when they rose up against the messenger. In other times, it became Brother Malcolm. And at another point, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad stripped Muhammad Ali of his name and beat him up in the paper and started referring to him at that time as Cassius Clay again. And when he did that, he sent for me. And as I was sitting at his table, he had Secretary John Ali read the article of him taking away the name Muhammad Ali and calling him Cassius Clay again. And then when the thing was finished, I'm hurt because I love Ali. And you don't want your teacher to be displeased with your brother if you love your brother. Then the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said to me, I did that for you. I was too dumb to ask him, how do you mean that? When Malcolm went, he said, he's an example for you. So I had Malcolm as an example. I had Ali as an example. But what was the example? that I too one day would be a very, very famous man. And the key would be, when I became this famous man, would I deny what Master Farad Muhammad and the Honorable Elijah Muhammad had given me. Because you know that I didn't make myself. Those two have made me whatever I am of good. Now, in this tape, 
that Brother Khaled made on the 9th of February.